Hello, good day, welcome, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another edition of Living With Cancer. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, oh, more of the, not aggressive, but how you are with cancer or how you are with people or how you are with things in life because obviously it's all very different now and being a little bit more aggressive or a bit more a bit less tolerant towards things so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today but before I go on um, I want to show you where I am this this time because I'm not in the middle of nowhere it's a it's a small little jetty I was over there actually a few minutes ago and I had to redo it because uh, four Russians decided they wanted to sit where I was there you go that's life um, yesterday I was Oh God, where's my finger? I was over there. Took me an hour to get there. Today I'm here. Just took me a few minutes. Uh, there's Malaga in the background. Now, we all cope with things very differently. Uh, me, for instance, in life I've always coped with things, I suppose, in more of an aggressive manner anyway, because I suppose that's been my background. Um, Obviously later in life I'm in my mid 40s now and you see things a lot differently but actually when you've got cancer you see things completely different. Sorry for the shades by the way, it's a bit brighter today. Um, so what I wanted to do is talk about, you've all been through this probably I would have thought, um, that you'll get, uh, you'll get somebody who wants to be a little bit more competitive with their illness towards your illness or You'll hear people say, oh, well, everybody's got cancer anyway. It's just a matter of time before it comes out. No, no, you haven't. Stop talking crap. Nobody's got flaming cancer unless you get it. Um, because actually cancer, if you've done research, cancer starts in a funny way. Um, and, you're, and there's a certain genes in your, in your body that trigger it, um, that make it start or, or make it accumulate. So they get on my nerves. Also, you get the people where the, the hypochondriacs in life, if you like, where, they, where they're always moaning about being ill and, oh, I've got a bad back or I've got an headache or my eyes are hurting, my finger feels like it's going to fall off and just generally, generally want to tell you all about their problems. They get on my tits. Sorry, they do. They get really good get up my nose. And then you get some people, um, for instance, I've had a few experiences where I've gone to a restaurant, say. Um, I, one particular experience was actually just after I finished my chemotherapy, I was very, very fat because obviously the chemotherapy does that to you. Um, you know, I was probably uh, 80 pounds, 90 pounds more than I am now. I mean, I don't look too bad now. I do work out, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I was a lot fatter after chemo because that's what steroids and chemo does. Um, and I went to this restaurant, I won't name it because I, I like the people who, who, who own it um, and it wasn't their fault. Um, I handled it very differently to how I would now um, but I was too weak to even fight a battle. It just Basically what happened is I'd ordered a particular dish, um, I couldn't have such, such and such and it needed to be cut, cooked a certain way. Now, they asked me how I wanted it, how I would like it, how it needed to be cooked. I told them, and this particular lady that worked there at the time, she said, not a problem, blah, blah, blah. It didn't come out like that, and I said, I'm ever so sorry. I said, I don't want to be a pain in the backside. I said, but I'm not very well, it has to be that particular way. Huh, huh, well, I don't know what your problem is. Blah, 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 blah. And it turned out I had to say, listen, look, I don't want to be funny. I said, I'm not being fussy. I'm not one of these lot. I said, but I've just, I'm just finishing a, a massive bout of chemotherapy and I need it to be right because I can't be ill. I need, it to, I need it to be right. Well, I can't believe you said that. She said, I don't believe you. You're a liar. And this was in front of my wife. And she said, um, uh, my mother's just died of cancer. Um, and I can't believe you just come out with that and you know she made it really uncomfortable actually it turns out two days later we went back to the same restaurant because we were staying on resort and she it was really strange because her mother walked through the door and I couldn't believe it I was so mortified 
I got up and walked out because I was struggling finishing chemotherapy. Um, I was struggling with life itself, not knowing. You know, I'm very lucky to get where I am now. I'm five years later and I'm very lucky. I didn't know that back then and neither did anyone else, neither did my wife, neither did my, my, my son was 10 then, neither did my 10 year old son, nobody did. And for somebody to be competitive like that or try and get a reaction for some unknown reason was shocking. Now, the aggression side, <coughs> we'll put that aside because that's just one element. I mean, it did annoy me, but it just yeah, that's one element. But I, I seem to get that sort of thing in, in, in all parts of life. It just, it does annoy me but I have to cope with it because I look like a thug. I was a thug, I suppose, when I was younger and people see me very differently. You know, I'm six foot three and I'm a big lad and people see me differently, even though I've got cancer, but you wouldn't know, okay? So I could be walking up, up the street and you know, you still get the, the clowns, if you like, that just walk into you or push into you or all the rest of it. And, you know, they just, it's just the lions in life, if you like. You know, you get people that are still very competitive in what they do in life. And, you know, the male population, when we're at a certain age, when we're younger, you know, we do puff our chests out. That's just what we do. That's what men do. Um, we do think we're King Dick. That's just what we do. And women are the same. Women are, are, are pretty much the same. I, I, you know, I've seen it, done it, been there. Um, so that's, that's the part of life um, that we're involved in. What, what really annoys me is you could be walking up the street and, and people just expect you to be uh, not, nothing wrong with you or, or not that I want them to think that there's anything wrong with me. I could be walking up the street and they, you know, they'll do something stupid and it just really annoys me and, and sometimes I'll have to say something, not that I want to say something, but sometimes I'll have to say something and, and they, they, they approach you really aggressively and you don't really want to say nothing. I'm rambling on a little bit now. There's a, there's a fella just sat by the side of me listening, I think. <laughs> but um, I don't really want to say anything. I don't want to fall out with anybody. It's just one of them things in life that, that, that happens. The aggressiveness of, of, you know, the effects of after chemotherapy, after cancer, just just annoying, annoying to the point where, you know, I, I, look, I don't, I don't look like I've got cancer. I mean, what does, what does somebody look like when they've got cancer? Generally, and mentally in your head, you think it's like a 90-year-old person shuffling along the road, really, really ill, or in a wheelchair, hooked over a Zimmer frame or something like that. And actually, that's not, that's not like that in life. Um, you know, look at me, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know I've got an incurable Hodgkin's lymphoma. There's only, very, there's only a few treated with my particular one every year. The outlook hasn't been great. You wouldn't know. I know of somebody else who has, you know, I've said before, there's, a, there's actually a family member who's had, who's had radiotherapy uh, and you wouldn't know looking at her, you know. It does annoy me, you know. I don't want people to feel sorry for me and, you know, roll the red carpet out in front of me, but actually, I would like to be treated better in life. I was that person back then. I'm not that person anymore. Um, you know, that's why, you know, <laughs> stop rambling, Palmer, for God's sake, stop rambling. So that's the aggression, you know, and to cope with that, what you've got to do is, what I do is I try and ignore it. I do try and ignore it. You know, here in Spain, um, people will um, walk into you in the street um, and that's not because they're being horrible, it's just because that's their way of, that's their nature, that's what happens here in Spain, you know, you'll see a whole family walking up the street, coming towards you, and they don't move out of the way. I don't know whether they do it on purpose, because I'm six foot three and I'm a big lad, but I, I don't know, you know, and I tend to sort of go to the side and ignore it and just let them carry on, because I don't want the conflict, I don't want the conflict. Stress with with the cancer is enough without life stress without you know i mean look for god's sake you know <laughs> why, why should anybody be stressed with this sort of lifestyle you know and i know i keep going to different places with um you know doing these videos and, and showing you what i'm doing but 
I love them, I love them. Not everybody, and I would say probably 90% of the sufferers out there haven't got what I've got. You know, so I'm very lucky, I am very lucky. I can't, I really can't moan. Now, aggression towards family. Now, this is, a, this is a hard one for me. You know, I'm not aggressive towards my family. I'm not at all. Um, I never have been, never been physical towards any member of my family, ever. Not even brothers and sisters who, you know, who I haven't seen for a long time, but I'm not aggressive towards anybody in my family. I am abrupt, I suppose. You know, I can't tolerate things too much now. I'm slightly deaf in my left ear. I don't see very well in my, my left eye. I think those are all fight damage um, from, from when I was younger. Um, you know, I was fighting all the way up until my 30s. Um, so the, the fight damage is probably taking its toll on me now. Um, so my left eye and my, my left ear don't work so well. Um, that said, you know, I, I can't tolerate too many, too many noises around me. So like, you can hear the, the, the shoreline crashing against the rocks. You know, if there was three or four people talking to the right of me, oh, my mate's gone now. <laughs> he must have got bored, probably couldn't understand me. Um, if there was a few people talking to the right of me, I would have stopped and gone because I can't, I can't focus. Now, that's, some of that's to do with chemotherapy, uh, the after effects of chemotherapy, not being able to focus, not being able to home in on one particular thing. But uh, being, being nasty, I, it isn't something that you mean to do. It's certainly not something I mean to do. You know, I hate doing it. And I always think after I've snapped or not been as tolerant as I should have been, I always think after, oh, for God's sake. But I'm, I'm not a very emotional person, you know. Don't say sorry enough, you know. I, my wife knows what I'm like. We've been together for many, many, many years. You know, over 20 years, 22, 22 or 23 years. Blimey. Ooh, now I feel old. Um, you know, and I probably don't say sorry enough. You know, I'm saying sorry now on this video. Annette, I love you to bits. I'm sorry. You know, for everything. You know, for being a moron when I was younger. Um, for being everything, but after this you can't seem to help it you 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 are less tolerant towards things stupid things and it's really annoying because there's no control you can't control it I am however you know I've been thinking about going and joining a church group there's one lad here in Spain he's an English fella he's gone through a similar thing you know gone through cancer he hasn't seen my video blogs I've only been doing them for a week but um, I'm going to get him onto it because we have some good discussions about things and and he says to me God has helped him and that way of thinking has controlled his mind state you know stops his aggression I might I might that's never been me I've had too many bad things in life happen to me for me to actually believe in something up there that that I don't know could brainwash me into thinking something you know and that sounds terrible that sounds terrible but please don't think I'm anti anti-Christ or anti-Muslim or anti-anything. I'm not against religion at all. It's just that things in my life haven't gone uh, as planned. You know, there's been far too many things in my life that haven't gone as planned, so I don't, I don't generally believe. But that might be something I might change to and do. I'm getting a bit of a crowd now, by the way. <laughs> uh, perhaps I think I'm famous. Uh, with be new shades. Well, they're old, but with be shades on. Um, so, you know, the aggression, whew, it's a tough one. I think when, when I get aggressive, I try and do, or when I get uh, annoyed, I try and do something to calm me down quickly. I'm always on my phone, I'm messing about on my phone. So what I'll do, I'll go straight onto YouTube and put something happy on, like, um, you know, on YouTube you've got these craft uh, channels. So I'll quickly go on and, and watch something like that to bring it down, bring it down. Um, go out for a walk. Here in Spain, I've got a, a scooter, a motorbike, a 125. So I go out for a ride and, and the best thing in the world for going out for a ride on scooter is that. You know, look at that. 10 kilometers of beachfront and I will ride that a couple of three times every single day just because I can and it's calming. So with the, with the aggressive state of mind, what I say or what I would advise is try and do something to 
excuse me. Try and do something to alleviate it. Try and do something for you to calm yourself down. Because you'll get angry, I don't care who you are. I really don't care who you are. You might be the most placid, calmest person on the planet. But I can guarantee you this. After chemo and, and with cancer or after cancer, you know, if you're cured, brilliant. You know, I clap my hands to all the people that are getting well and getting better and being cured. But I can guarantee you this right now. You will still get peed off with people doing stupid things around you. You know, so my, my advice would be go and do something to calm me down. Read the Bible. I don't know. Uh, read a good book. Um, go and watch a boxing channel. You know, um, do what I do. Walk along the beach and just do nothing. You know, do what I do and go over there because that's how stupid I am. You know, look at all of When I look at that from here, I think, wow, what an idiot. <laughs> um, go on your bike. Go in your car. Um, you know, do something that you enjoy to calm you down. So, um, yeah, yeah, lots of herbs, lots of... This is all ad hoc. I don't script any of this. I just I just go with the flow off what I do. Oh, by the way, you'll notice I've had a shave today. The only reason I don't shave is because from time to time, when you get ill, um, you'll get mouth ulcers and cold sores. Uh, that's just part of life after chemotherapy. Um, the cold sores, they're nearly gone now, so I'm a bit chuffed. Um... And I'm in another new jumper, feeling fit, on the beach. <laughs> um, so listen, aggression, try and do something to, to alleviate. Try and do something so you can forget about it. I mean, yesterday I did, I did say that um, try and, you know, try and set targets, try and set goals. This is exactly the same, really, to be, to be honest. If you set a target or set a goal for when you're aggressive, because you will be, you will be, it's just human nature. That's what we do. Um, it will help, it will help. So listen, stay lucky, rambled on a little bit too much, probably a little bit too off course. But listen, hey, this is real, this is no bull. This is this is all truth. Uh, tomorrow I'll do another one. I'm, as I say, I'm gonna try and do every one every single day. So listen, stay lucky guys. Please like and subscribe, do what you do. And uh, we're all in this together. Brothers, sisters, fallen. And, and, and still here. So, um, listen, big love, peace.